What's going on guys, Enemy1 back here with another video and today we're gonna be discussing what if Norto was neglected and ended up like Obito part 3 so let's begin the video. Hiruzen looked at Minato who had a sad expression on his face, they were currently in the Hokage's office. I was telling you from the beginning that Norto is not the demon fox and the soul would eventually return to his chakra. Now look, where did I get you? Your own son hates you and your family. When I tried to help the boy, you sent your own Anbu so that my Anbu couldn't reach him or help him. He was told to Minato while glaring at the man and his tone sounded disappointed. Minato just put his head down in shame. I know what I have done is wrong but I want to fix my mistakes and get to know my son. Minato said as he was inside and glared at the man. I think it's too late. In this entire village, the only one Naruto trusts are me, Suki and his three academy friends. Hiruzen said as he got up from the chair that he was sitting in. You can try Minato, but the boy's hatred for you and your family is something that can't be comprehended. Hiruzen said as he left the office. Minato just kept at looking at the family picture that was on his desk, but there was one problem with it. One of his members of his family was missing, and that was Naruto. His hate towards the QB made him hate his son. He said to the villagers that Naruto was the QB itself, and they could take out their anger on him. He was the one who told the villagers not to kill Naruto because his son, because he thought that if Naruto was killed, the soul of the Nine Tails would eventually come back to Menma. And look, that exact same thing happened and he realized that his son was not a demon. His son was an adult in mind but his body was still one of a child and there was no one to blame him for that but him. He made his son grow up but instead of giving him love he gave him hate and he, he was truly ashamed at himself for that. Minato remembered Kushina was also very depressed this week. The fact that Naruto was not the demon hit her the hardest. She was the container of the cube before. Naruto, how could she have thought that Naruto was the demon? If she thought logically then, that would have made her a demon as well. Naruto opened his eyes, the sun shining right on his beautiful Arasa eyes. What time is it? Naruto thought, sitting up and looking at the alarm that was beside him. He lazily squinted his eyes at the alarm, seeing what time it was. It's 8.10. I'm going to be late if I don't hurry up, Naruto thought, jumping right out of his bed as he looked down around his room. Oh, it was a mess. Naruto internally cursed himself. What the hell, Zetsu? I told him to wake me up. Naruto cursed at the plant-like creature. Naruto quickly got up and did some normal morning routine. Door or window? Naruto looked at the door. If I went through the door, I would have to meet the Namikazes. I would rather not do that. Naruto ran towards the window and jumped right out of it. His hair flowed down the air as he dropped towards the ground, unharmed. Now to the academy, Naruto thought, looking right towards the direction of the academy with his sharp and deadly eyes. Naruto slowly disappeared in a swirl of leaves that took his place. He repaired right in his seat as nothing just had happened. Naruto looked around, noticing that no one had seen him, what he had just pulled. Everyone was just too busy talking to each other. Naruto nodded to himself, seemingly satisfied at this development. Though it seems he did miss the eyes of Suki's, who grunted at the technique. Cool. I'll have to get him to teach me that, Suki thought, 
looking at looking at Narzo with her non usual flustered face, Narzo looked around as Erika walked into the class. Hello everyone, Erika said. Hello, Erika Sensei. A lot, of the, a lot of the class shouted with excitement. Erika smiled right back at them with such content and happiness for them all. As I said a few days ago, I would like to congratulate you all once again on graduating from the academy. The class beamed at him, think, thanking him for his services. Wow, it does sadden me that you are all growing up and becoming a Genin. It's necessary for all for your development as a ninja and as a person. Thanking you all for learning under me for this past six years. Hope to see you all again in the future. Many were once again shedding anime tears. Naruto was internally relieved that he was just barely on time for the assigning teams. He didn't care who he worked with. He can he, he just can't be with Sakura. She was the biggest fangirl of Menma. Naruto knew for a fact that Menma would be on his team, since he guessed that Minato wanted him and Menma to get close. That was the part of his plan. Anyway, I would like to start calling out your new teammates that you'll be working under a Jonin sensei. A lot of people nodded, wanting their desires to be with Suki or Menma to be absolutely fulfilled. Team 7 is quite an overwhelming team. I have high hopes from you in the future. People, people immediately tensed up, wondering what this so-called overwhelming team consists. Team 7 shall consist of 4 people Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Suki, Menma Namikaze. Many people eyes widen at the mention of Suki's and Menma's team names, hoping that it was one of them being on the list. Uzumaki Naruto, your sensei is Hatake Kakashi. A lot of class stopped and looked towards Naruto, who had an unamused face. They glared right at Naruto, infuriated at the result. Naruto just sat there, feeling the glares from the fanboys. Suki too looked at Naruto with a small, small, small and apparent smirk right on her face like usual. Sakura jumped in joy. Take that, you new pig. True love prevails. I have Men Makun on my team. Sakura screeched like a fangirl as Ino glared at her. Oh, well, that's it for today. Your sensei shall be here in a few minutes. I was glad to be your sensei for the time. Observe the academy. It was a pleasure working with you all. Thank you. Erika said with a smile as he announced all the teams. Team 1, come with me. Asa, a sword and you got you got up from the seats and walked towards the door falling right behind their sensei you did not leave the room without glaring at Naruto. suki got up from her seat as soon as you left the room and jumped towards a seat that was right next to Naruto. he looked at her confused on seeing why she even did that why are you here? Your fanboys are glaring at me. Naruto looked back at the front and saw the fanboys of Suki glaring at him once again. Suki just stayed silent for a few seconds. We are on a team, so let's get acquainted, he said. Naruto looked at her confused, but we already know each other. There is no reason for us to be introducing ourselves again. Suki gave him a whack to the leg of, with her own leg. This is only an excuse for me to sit right next to you. Naruto shrugged, not caring for the reason that she was using. Suki continued to sit right next to Naruto in silence. I want you to teach me that technique. Naruto raised an eyebrow, looking right at Suki. What technique? Naruto asked, seemingly confused at the words that came out of Suki's mouth. She looked at Naruto, giving him a knowing look. The technique where you just randomly appeared in a swirl of leaves or something. 
Naruto finally got what Suki was trying to tell him. He gained a new look at Suki. Oh, you mean the body flicker? Yes, whatever the hell that is. I want you to teach me. Naruto internally sighed at this predicament. He continued to gaze at Suki with his eyes piercing, beautiful arouser eyes. Sure, I really don't care, just ask me later, Naruto said, getting a nod from yours truly. <laughs> sure, at the same place, right? Naruto nodded back at her, looking at the class right in front of them. Over time, people that used to fill the classroom slowly started to get empty. Naruto saw Kiba, Shino, and Hinata get their names called by the Jonin Sensei. Yuhi Kurunai. The next team was the team that had Sikamaru, Choji, and Ino. They were picked up by Asuma Saratobi. Naruto noted how Asuma had been knacked for smoking just like Hiruzen. Soon after, they were only the team that were left hanging. A few minutes and a man with spiky silver hair, a mask that covered most of his face and the only part that did not cover his face was his right eye. He held a small orange book in his hand and had a bored expression on his face. His eyes lazily looked at the Genins before looking right back at his book. Copy Ninja Hatsuki Kakashi. I should have known that he would be selected for Team 7 Sensei. Naruto thought, looking at the famed starring gun, no Kakashi. At least I did not get a weak sensei, he thought. Kakashi narrowed his eyes at Naruto. The blonde always had this mysterious aura around him. You must be Team 7, Kakashi said lazily. Greet me at the rooftop in five minutes, he said, as they started walking towards the hall. But as soon as they entered the hall, they noticed that Kakashi was gone. I see, he used the body flicker to get his way to the roof of the academy, Naruto thought. Looking towards the stair that led up to the next floor, Sakura sighed, knowing that they were going to have to walk a few more floors after that. Before Suki, Minmo, or even Sakura knew, Naruto was gone. Rooftop Kakashi looked at Naruto curiously. This was certainly not the Naruto that he was expecting to see. What surprised him the most was that Naruto appeared at the roof just after he did. He could not have done it with pure speed. He had to use the Sunshin no Jutsu. It surprised him because Naruto was not supposed to be able to do it do that kind of jutsu. The jutsu was a tuning level jutsu. Who, from what he had heard, Naruto was an average student. He shrugged off his thoughts when he saw the rest of his team appear. He looked at them lazily. Sakura seemed to be out of breath, while Suki, well, was Suki, and Menma was ready to do this about 10 more times. Looking at Sakura, Kakashi could tell that the girl had lacked physical training, meaning that she was physically weak. Looking at other things, it seemed that the girl did not train at all. She lost her breath just climbing a few stairs. Menma looked at Naruto for a moment before going to take his seat right beside the blonde. Naruto did not spare a glance at Menma. He just sat there as if Menma was not even there, something which seemed to trouble him greatly. He hated being ignored, especially by his brother. Suki took the next seat to Naruto as well. Naruto looked at her, then turned away as Sakura said right beside Menma. Kakashi never took his eyes off his book as he spoke. Alright, now that everyone is here, I want you to introduce yourself. By telling your names, likes, dislikes, he said in a bored tone. Sakura did not seem to get it. Sensei, why don't you give us a demonstration? Kakashi took his eyes off his book and stared at the girl for a moment. She was supposed to be smart. He could not understand why she would say something like that. He did say that they were supposed to introduce themselves, he sighed. 
I am Hatsuke Kakashi. I have no intentions of telling you my likes and my dislikes. As for my dream, I, uh, I have a few. And I have a few hobbies as well. He introduced himself. His eyes off Sakura and back at his book again. All he gave us was his name. Three Genin's thought with a set drop. Naruto gave no reaction to it. He just stared impassively into the blue sky. You're next, Kakashi said looking at Sakura. Sakura nodded. Hi, I am Sakura Haruno. My likes, she looked at Menma with a blush. My dreams are, she looked at Menma again with a blush and a soft giggle. Menma ignored her. He went on with his boarding. My dislikes are Eno Pig. Kakashi looked at her with a raised eyebrow. Fangirl, he thought with a sad drop. Things are going to be rough for him with Team 7. He hated dealing with fangirls, they annoyed him, especially since they did not take their ninja carrier very seriously, rather spend their time on looking good. He looked at Suki, you're next, emo. <laughs> my name is Suki Uchiha, my likes, I don't have many, but one of my likes is quite obvious to see and it's quite clear to know. My dislikes, fanboys, and people who hold me down. My hobbies, figure it out yourself. Dreams, what I have is no dream. Because I'll make it a reality. I want to kill a certain someone and rebuild my clan. Oh yes, even full brood mode. I should have expected that much, Kakashi thought, looking at Suki. He had a lot to do with this team. Sakura's fangirl's attitude, Suki's dark path. He had to do what he had to do to ensure that Suki stayed out of the dark path. He wanted her to develop bonds in the village and with her teammates. He looked at Menma, giving him a nod to introduce himself. Menma nodded and turned towards their final and last member of the team. He pointed at Naruto, wanting his introduction. Alright, my name is Namikaze Menma. I like my friends and those I consider family. Training. Dislikes, death, and waiting for the three minutes f for the ramen to cook. My dream is to protect my precious people no matter what and always be there for them. Even if even if it puts my life and dreams behind theirs. I also want to surpass all the previous Okage and become Okage so that I'll be able to protect my precious people, see my family complete once again and undo all the things I did wrong in the past. He said with a soft but sad smile. Man, my so cool, Sakura thought with a dreamy look on her face. You, emo version 2, Kakashi said, gaining a look from Naruto that had a blank look to it. After a few seconds, Naruto sighed and started to do his introduction. My name is uh, Uzumaki Naruto. My likes, I have none. My dislikes, I have none. My hobby is training, I guess. My dream, uh, that I know very well, Naruto said, getting tired of giving him too much information about himself. Could he be wanting to become Hokage? No, he doesn't seem like the type of person who wants to be Hokage, though he might be in another world or something along those lines, Suki thought, getting her eyes back towards Kakashi once again. He had an eye smile directed at them all. Well, tomorrow I would like to, for all of us to be at Team 7 training ground. If you don't know where that is, then you should know that it's at the borders of the village. He nodded, seemingly getting what he was saying. But they would have to actually ask for directions if they do not know which side the training grounds are on. Kakashi glanced at each of them as he broke the news to them. Tomorrow we are going to be doing a survival test. There are too many graduates this year. Thus, we will be doing the test to determine those who are going to be ready to be getting 
out of the 28 academy students, only 10 will become Genins and the rest will be sent back to the academy. He paused and looked at the reactions. But Sensei, we have already passed the academy test and gradu graduated, which makes us Genin, Sakura said. Kakashi shook his head. You pass the academy exams to be Genin. You have to pass my test. Paused. Your chances of failing this test are 66%. While we meet at 6 in the morning, training round 7, I suggest that you do not eat breakfast or you'll puke. He said. See ya. He said. Before leaving in a sort of leaves. Not before glancing at Naruto. Naruto got up to leave. I personally would rather eat. But do what you want to do, he said as he disappeared in a whirl of leaves. Naruto appeared in his room in the Namikaze compound in a swirling vortex. It was quiet, late, and he was training on his Mangekyo shotting gun. He had to figure out his left eye's ability and the ability shocked him, but he was very happy with the ability that he had. Black Zetsu came out of the ground. The papers are ready. We tricked me into signing the papers to disown you. Now, now you can buy your own place to stay at, Black Zetsu said with a smirk. A small smile appeared on Narsa's face. Good job. After I become a ninja, I'm out of this house, he said. Next day, training ground 7. Narsa was relaxing. On a tree branch, he had arrived at the training ground before anyone did. He did not want to listen to Sakura's voice, thus he chose to relax on the tree. His teammates could not sense him. They were good, but they were not good enough, good enough to sense his chakra. He was good at hiding his presence. Someone like Kakashi would be able to detect him only right now. Teammates had arrived just after he did. Sakura took the time that C was alone with Menma as an opportunity to impress him. Thus, C was fawning over him. Menma was blissfully ignoring her, and Suzuki was just leaning to a tree with her eyes closed. Jetsu, Jetsu's head appeared from the tree. Naruto looked at him. Do you have something to tell me? No, Zetsu replied. So you're bored then. You no longer have Madara to converse with. Zetsu nodded. How's the information gathering? It's been rather difficult lately. I've not been able to find anything useful, he said. I'm curious, which of your skills are you going to show today? Taijutsu. I've trained in Taijutsu ever since I was six. It is my best option. I cannot fight by using any of my more powerful techniques, or they'll suspect me. Nor to respond it. Taijutsu was a good option for him, since he was, he would have to answer a few questions. If it did ninjutsu, he would have to ask him, where did he learn those jutsus, and who taught them to it. Him. His taijutsu could simply say that he's trained on his own. No one would question him further. It looks like your sensei has not arrived yet, Jetsu said. I'll be taking around a look around the village, he said, disappearing. It had been 45 minutes after 6 and Kakashi had yet to appear. Norsi was getting impatient. Kakashi was too laid back to arrive on time and at the meeting that he set up. He had not weighed yesterday and now he was waiting. He hated that and Kakashi did not respect other people's time. At 8, Norsi patiently final patience finally ran out. He jumped, he jumped out of the tree. His teammates noticed him. Norzo, you're late. Kakashi sensei said we had to arrive here at 6. Sakura yelled. Naruto had no words for her. She was not going to believe him if he said that he was just there sleeping. He stared at her, but he started walking from the tree and sat next to it and closed his eyes. It took him three hours to get to us, Naruto thought, knowing this would ha probably take some time and that 
they would have to wait for another hour or so. And as expected, it was over three hours of waiting, Kakashi appeared with a nice smile on his face as he walked up to Team 7 training ground. You're late! yelled Sakura and Menma, annoyed at the amount of time that they all had to wait for him. Kakashi chuckled in a very cheapest manner. Haha, <laughs> sorry, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take another route. You know, black cats are a symbol of bad luck. I couldn't risk it at all, he said, with another cheapest laugh at the end. Liar! Both Menma and Sakura yelled again. The other two stood up and walked towards Kakashi alongside Sakura and Menma. There was a moment of suspense that was looming throughout the year. Kakashi shrugged and looked at the rest of the team. Now that everyone is here, I would like to begin the test, he said. Your objective is to get the bells from me before noon he said taking out two bells if you do you'll be sa if you do you'll become a guinea and if you don't you'll be sent back to the academy but sensei there is only two bells there are four of us does this mean only two of us will become guineans sakura asked, confused should have expected that from her kakashi thought that is, if you do get the bells. Now come at me with the intent to kill. Begin. Four Genins dashed off to the trees to hide their positions, making Kakashi smile. It was a good smile. It was a good sign that they all had listened to the academy lectures and understood some of the shinobi rules. Never show your location to the enemy. They did just that by hiding from him. It was. Not that they could actually hide from him, they were just Ganyans and he was an elite Jonin. They were merely trying and he could give a point of their attempts. Kakashi made his way to the trees to look for the Ganyans. He was in no rush because he knew sooner or later one of them would come after him to get the bells. He was able to detect Sakura rather easily. A few seconds later, he detected Menma hiding in a tree and Suki was hiding in a bush behind him. But Naruto, he was unable to find it. He stretched out his senses. He smiled as he found Naruto sitting comfortably on a tree branch. The blonde looked comfortable as he was absorbing him. He looked at Sakura's direction and decided to start with her. She was the weakest of the three, without a doubt. She was a no challenge in Taijutsu, so he decided Genjutsu would be rather a better test for her. The girl had a mindset of Genjutsu, so this would be a good challenge for her. Sakura felt a bit dizzy. Her vision was getting blurry. She couldn't understand what was happening to her. At the last minute, she was perfectly fine hiding in a tree away from Kakashi, while she was also looking for Menma. She wanted to hide where Menma was hiding. She needed to be near her Menma-kun so he could get to know her better. But now, she did not feel well. Ugh, Sakura. She was brought out of her thoughts when she heard a voice calling her name. She could not now. She could now clearly see, and the weird feeling that she was feeling in her head was gone. She looked up to see Menma coming into view. She beamed suddenly upon seeing that it was Menma who was calling her. Help me, Sakura. Clo looked closely at her Menma kun. Her eyes opened wide as she watched Minma struggle his way towards her. The horror. His body was battered and be bruised. He was also pierced with several kunais. She rushed o over him, trembling. Her heart was beating faster than normal. Minma dropped to the ground. Minma kun, she thought as she stopped in her tracks as tears began to rush off her eyes. She felt as her heart has stopped beating. Ah! She screamed at the thought 
that Minma was dead and fainted. Kakashi looking from a distance could only straight drop. The girl had only fallen into an easy d rank genjutsu. She was supposed to be smart for God's sake and she should have detected the genjutsu easily. Maybe I should have used an e rank genjutsu, he thought. Kakashi shrugged and went away to find his next victim. Pathetic, Nojo thought. Looking at the fallen girl, it was clear that she was caught in a simple genjutsu she had been unable to detect. Nor could, Naruto could only guess that the girl had seen Menma in a very bad state that made her faint. faint. Sakura was not fit to be a ninja, she was a book smart. But that did not make her a shinobi. Skills and detection made her ninja. Sakura had that. None of that. Uh, all she cared was looking good in front of her Minmakun. If she ended up being killed as a Genin, with her current mindset, it would be all her fault. Nobody else's. Norto jumped off the tree that he was in and made his way towards the Kakashi. There was something about the test that was hidden. The Genin team in Konoha was supposed to be composed of three Genins and a Jonin. There was no team in Konoha that was a group of three. Even the Anru squads were made out of four members, one being the captain. Konoha preached teamwork to the shinobi. The objective of the test was in contrast to that motto. Despite them not being an official team, they were still a team, and fighting for themselves to get the belts did not promote teamwork. Also, academy graduates couldn't defeat a Jonin. A thought came to his mind. They were not expected to defeat a Jonin, but to work as a team to defeat him. They were a team and were expected to work with one another in missions. Sakura would never agree to work with him. He wanted to have some fun, but... and he would have his fun by fighting with Kakashi. He could not beat Kakashi by only using Taijutsu, but the Jonin was surely going to underestimate him. He also had an element of surprise. He could not take advantage of that. Norta came out of the clearing and took a taijutsu stance. Kakashi was similar to the Uchiha interceptor style. So we dance, Kakashi, Naruto said impassively. Kakashi raised an eyebrow but continued to read his book. To anyone, he might look like he was not ready, but Kakashi was paying attention to Naruto. Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed and appeared right in front of Kakashi. Fast, Kakashi thought with wide eyes. He had never expected an academy student to move that fast, never in his life. He expected Naruto to surprise him, but this was far too much of a surprise. Naruto's right hand was at Kakashi, but Kakashi was quick to get over his shock. He was fast to react. He blocked the blow and felt a tiny bit of power behind the punch. Hits like guy but on a smaller scale, Kakashi thought. Naruto brought out his right leg and attempted to kick Kakashi on his left side. Kakashi raised his knee to block the attack. He quickly put away his book because he now knew that he would get embarrassed if again if he continued to read the book. Kakashi brought his right leg up, trying to hit Naruto. His foot connected with Naruto's hand. He retrieved his leg and brought it back again at Naruto. This time he spun around for more speed and power. Naruto brought out both of his hands to block the attack. The power behind the kick was enough to force him back to his feet away from Kakashi. This dance should be entertaining. Naruto said, just enough for, for Kakashi to hear him. Kakashi looked at Naruto straight in the eyes. He seems to be happy and calls a fight a dance. He must really love the thrill of a good fight. 
Kakashi said, looking at the blonde. There was no smile, but he could see a bit of excitement in Naruto's eyes. Kakashi got into his own stance. Naruto seemed to be good in taijutsu, and his speed was impressive. He had to get serious in this fight to evaluate Naruto's strength. Naruto got back into his stance. He knew that he would he could not beat Kakashi or by only using the amount of strength that he intended to use. But he would at least enjoy a little taijutsu clash with Kakashi. Naruto attempted to kick Kakashi in the face, but Kakashi bent back to avoid being hit. Naruto spun around, balancing himself and not giving Kakashi enough time to attack him. Spinning around, he brought his leg up, trying to get Kakashi, the Jonin. Kakashi caught the blow and held Naruto's foot firmly with both of his hands. His right foot moved fast and crashed into Naruto's stomach, sending the blonde flying. Kakashi did not give Naruto the time to recover. Within seconds, he was already in front of Naruto. He attempted a right hook to which Naruto was quick enough to block. Naruto jumped away from the Jonin. He rushed at Kakashi again. He tried crashing his foot into Kakashi's ribs, but the Jonin jumped back. Naruto did not stop. He dashed at Kakashi and jumped. He appeared above Kakashi. His right foot was crashing down with speed and power. Kakashi did not attempt to block. He replaced himself with the log. Naruto's foot connected with the log, breaking it in half. Naruto landed on the ground and stood still. His eyes narrowed to where Kakashi was. The Jonin was within the trees. He disappeared off to the trees. Suki and Menma watched from different parts of the place where they were hiding. They were very impressed by the fight that had been showing right now towards the two of them. Naruto, you have been hiding your power from me, Suki thought, huffing and giving out a little pout of displeasure laced inside of her head. But that wasn't important for now, that is, a hidden motive. What could this hidden motive be? Suki thought, jumping away from the fight to distance herself from Kakashi. A few seconds later, both saw their sensei flying back into the clearing. A second later, Naruto appeared above the Jonin and attempted to pummel the Jonin to the ground. Kakashi could not dodge, but he was able to bring out both of his hands to block Naruto's punch. The power of the attack was enough to send Kakashi crashing down to the ground, even though he had blocked the attack. A small crater was formed where Kakashi had crashed. Naruto jumped away from Kakashi, allowing the Jonin to recover. Kakashi got out of the crater and rushed at Naruto at great speeds that should make him invisible to a genin. He appeared in front of Naruto. Naruto was not fast enough to react as Kakashi's fist crashed into his gut, making him grunt as at the effects of the powerful punch. Kakashi did hand seals and went and held his hands together close to his mouth. Fire release. Great fireball jutsu. Naruto appeared so fast, avoid being hit by the jutsu. Kakashi ended the jutsu, having sensed that Naruto was able to dodge. Naruto was now a distance away from where he was previously. You're far better than I thought. I did not know it, there is a genin in Konoha that can beat you. But I must end this now, Kakashi said, but before he could do anything, an alarm rang up, signifying it was noon. Kakashi sighed and motioned for Naruto to follow him to the rest of the Team 7. Suki, Minma, you can come out now, time's up, Kakashi said, as both Suki and Minma appeared. Kakashi gathered them and looked at each of them with a disappointed look. You did not get the bells, thus you fail the test. Naruto took out two bells from his pocket, making Kakashi look at his belt, then look at Naruto with wide eyes. When did you get them? The time I pummeled you into the ground before I jumped back. I had taken the bells already. You are too focused on testing my power that you forgot about the test. 
You're thinking that I had no interest in the bells. I just wanted to fight. That made it easy for me to get them. Naruto responded. Kakashi nodded, still shocked. So, what are you going to do with the bells? He asked. Aim of the test was not to get the bells, but to test if we could work as a team, as a three Ganyans cannot defeat an elite Jonian. I'm surprised that Sakura with all her brains couldn't figure that out. Kakashi noticed the fact that Naruto's face remained impassive and there was no amusement in his voice. If you knew that, why did not you work with your teammates? It doesn't matter. I knew I could take the belts on my own and let's just be honest. Sakura has been is brainwashed by her mother. She will never work with me. I suggest that you take her out of the team and place her in the medical ninja course since her talker control is better and she is not fit for combat. Kakashi had to agree with Naruto, but Naruto should have tried to talk to them. Naruto is right. The purpose of this test was teamwork. I could give you another chance to work together, but since Naruto has the belts, and I suppose to fail you guys would be a waste of potential, I guess I'll pass you, he said, making Suki and Minma sign relief. Naruto threw the bells back at Kakashi. Kakashi caught the bells. You can go now, except for you, Naruto. We'll meet at training ground 7 at 9 a.m. Okay, he said. All the Ganyans nodded and left. Kakashi looked at Naruto. Uh, as Naruto sighed. The Hokage's office, I presume, Naruto said. To which Kakashi nodded. Hokage's office. Minato stared deep into Naruto's blue eyes. He found nothing from the blonde in his eyes. They had no emotion in them. He never thought that he would see Naruto's eyes like that. Naruto knew that Minato wanted to ask the questions about the strength. He was assuming that the man watched the entire match from his crystal ball. He was not going to answer any questions. He did not want to answer. No. No one could force him to do that. Naruto, what happened to you? Minato asked, breaking the silence in the room. Nothing happened to me. I was always like this. You were too blind to see it. Minato sighed. It was true he knew nothing about his son. Who trained you? Minato asked again. I'm afraid I, can, I cannot answer that question. For now, any, anyways, he said coldly. Why? The Hokage asked. Because, Hokage-sama, I don't trust you and I never will. Naruto, listen. I know what I've done to you is wrong, but I need to know who trained you, Minato said, as Naruto sighed. I train myself every day by breathing for hours and learning jutsu so that I wouldn't get beaten up by the villagers again. Perhaps that is what puts me to become the strong survival, Naruto said, as Minato's head dropped. I don't believe there is anything more that needs to be discussed now. I'll be taking my leave, Norta said as he disappearing from the office. Well, that went well, Kakashi said. Minato shook his head. No, nothing will end for us anyways. Everything went well for Norta. He never answered any of my questions. We don't know who trained him, and I believe he was more secrets. You have to keep an eye on him, Kashi, to find out what he is hiding. Kakashi looked at Minato. I thought you were going to leave it as it is. Won't he tell his secrets when he's ready? You do know that if he finds out that you sent me to spy on him, he will hate you even more than he does now. Kakashi said, That is something I'm willing to accept for the good of the village, Minato replied. If Naruto was hiding things that could make him a threat to the village, they had to be found out soon. He was sure that if Naruto was loyal to the village, with that he had gone through in his life, and he, 
he, him hiding his strength all along made him even more suspicious. While the two talked, they never noticed a pair of yellow eyes recording their conversation. So guys, this is it for the What If Naruto was uh, neglected and ended up like Obito part 3. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. So, so see you guys in the next video. Peace.